So there are people that complain about what they perceive to be a fad within economics that is to refer to all human behavior, or most of it, as signaling. And signaling really um, has two different really meanings. One was originally um, used by Spence in his signaling theory, and it was really about doing something which was impressive. When you're doing something so impressive that other people aren't even tempted to do it. So in this case, something like hipsterism wouldn't actually be very impressive and therefore not signaling because it's not like we're all on the sidelines of being hips, wanting to be hipsters, but aren't because we just find it too difficult. That is not the case. Uh, in which case, hipsterism makes more sense to be uh, defined as, you know, an expression of uh, fashion, of, of particular taste. Um, whereas under Hansen's definition, of signaling, and Hansen is this uh, GMU economist who came up with many things, the Great Filter, Age of M, prediction markets, uh, a lot of work in many areas. Um, and, and he promotes a, a really a different version of signaling in which it's not really just about uh, being impressive, although that can be part of it, it's really more about uh, signaling value. It's about signaling value across perhaps not a single dimension, but across many, because you are uh, making trade-offs, in fact, um, to, you know, it's, it's not like you have a unitary thing that you're trying to be. It's more like you are um, sh showing s different percentages of allegiance to separate allies. And people are doing this, for example, in the case of the hipster. Let, let's break down uh, the, the guy's, uh, the wax mustache, right, over here. What happens when someone has a waxed mustache? If you have a waxed mustache, you are sending various messages. The first message you might be sending is that you have black shiny hair. And this is just the direct obvious truth that is just directly verifiable by people, black shiny hair. They could just see this and you're not really paying a cost besides buying that wax. The second thing you might be doing when you're um, having this waxed mustache displaying that uh, to the world, like why would you do this out of all things you could do in the world, right? It's, it's not arbitrary, we're doing, we're sending messages. The second thing you're doing is that you are establishing, establishing a, a sort of uh, common ground if you're going to have a conversation anyway, establishing ground for conversation. So it's like, okay, I inhabit this meme plex and we can, if we're going to talk anyway, we might um, talk about this particular interest that I have. But in that sense, you know, it is a form of uh, cheap talk. It's a form of cheap talk uh, because you're, you're just um, providing that, that ground and really um, nothing more. But the third thing you might be doing is, is to actually be uh, signaling commitment. You are especially committed to the hipster ethos, to the hipster ethos. And so when you do this, other people may want, you know, just observers in general may want to assess you accurately relative to others, but they will not be able to do so um, because you had to pay the price. You had to go in and explore the state space of hipsterism and develop a style that was sufficiently unique and creative and matched your own personal, uh, you know, your, your made you look good while at the same time uh, showing a devotion to an already established uh, system. So then that tracks the cost. That tracks the cost. You have cost in the sense that other people are not willing or able or have in the past, they're probably able, but they in the past have not themselves undergone that causal trajectory that led them to uh, explore that same uh, region of reality, which is hipsterism. And so therefore, all these observers around you can't actually assess you properly. And yet you are still signaling to them, I am high value within this, within some field, right? And notice this applies to everything. This applies not just to hipsterism. This applies to me right now, presumably. Like, there are people out there 
who have no idea about most of anything that I talk about. And nonetheless, I'm still signaling to them because, the, you know, it seems like I know what I'm talking about. But in order for them to uh, accurately assess me, they would have to actually go into my world and learn all that stuff, and then that would be costly for them. So I am signaling that I am doing something costly and that, uh, that I am high value. I am high value and, you know, the, the more... Of course, there are uh, gradients to this. You know, the more niche you become, the more you hide within this framework. So you're ma you're making trade-offs here. So there are, um, you know, there are people you're putting off. You're putting off people, you know, if you go to some church, if you go to some school, if you just business opportunities. It's like if you're sufficiently hipster, you are putting off a sufficient amount of people. Um, and but the, notice that um, all this doesn't signaling is not just about hipsters. This is um, a particular example meant to illustrate what exactly uh, is meant by Hansonian signaling. But everything really, all communication, um, essentially all human communication that has any sort of hidden message whatsoever would qualify as Hansonian signaling and pretty much we assume that everything actually does have a hidden message everything has um, And and the message might be hidden even to the perpetuator of that message and in fact is most of the time so Hansen makes a big deal out of uh, consciousness being like you know the creepy guy that says yes sire to the king and the king would actually be the rest of the mind. The vast majority of your mind is not conscious. The vast majority of the human is not conscious. And so therefore the vast majority of humanity is run by things which aren't conscious unto humanity. And 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 this is the this is the what it consists of. It consists of making all these uh, trade-offs and calculations. Um, across several different parameters in order to um, signal high quality dimension uh, across whatever dimension it may be. Again, it could be hipsterism, it could be something completely made up. Like you can make up your own uh, game, right? You know, people make up their own uh, aesthetic spaces or intellectual spaces or whatever, um, fashion spaces. But the point is, you're trying to. Uh, signal quality and um, and and make trade-offs across potential allies and and then the thing is that uh, something that I think that Robin Hansen doesn't uh, emphasize enough in my opinion is the fact that you are not only signaling to sort of people that you perceive to be in your plane of simultaneity you know and like space around you but you are also signaling to your expected future self. Because actually the brain uh, models, you know, people that it perceives to be like in space around them, in it, it, it's expected future self in a very similar way. And that's the reason why you actually can't uh, stick to your, a lot of people have a hard time sticking to difficult schedules where they have to work out or they have to diet because they don't really care about their future selves in the same way that they care about their present self. And this is just biologically deeply wired into how you perceive. You perceive the immediate self very differently than you perceive the expected future self. And and it's in, in the same way. So you're, you're using those same regions of the brain to simulate other people than you're using to simulate your expected self, um, even though it's you know, it, it, it is another person. It's a future person, right? Um, and, and so that, that's a mystery. Like at some point, you start to really um, identify with the self. So some here, there's some particular um, temporal grain at which it's still self. And at some point, it stops being self and your brain actually starts uh, modeling just like other people. 
And so this signaling, therefore, this signaling that's going on where you're um, trying to send, um, trying to convince others of your value across particular dimensions is, is occurring not just in relation to others, but it's occurring in relation to your expected future self. And the reason for that is, is interesting. And, and the fact that you're also compromising with several other expected future selves because your mind doesn't just have a single expected future self. It knows that, you know, it, it's, it's adaptable. It, it knows that it's not going to uh, be a single uh, unitary sort of person that has a single utility function that is trying to maximize. The human doesn't work that way, even though from from your own location, from your consciously, you may feel that way. You may feel like you're absolutely honest and you're absolutely uh, a coherent uh, self, whereas that in itself is a form of signaling to expected f other future selves uh, in, in to whom you are uh, compromising with um, to, to different levels and, and different, and also depending on, obviously on your, on your circumstances, uh, depending on what setting you find yourself in, that contributes extremely to how you actually go about with it.